Welcome to The Trader, a traitor's podcast. This is Matthew. I'm a writer working in TV development, and I am a handy faithful. The Trader features deep dives into every episode of the multi-award winning hit TV competition show, The Traitors, as well as interviews with contestants from the shows. In fact, this is an interview special with one of the superstar contestants from The Traitors Australia Season 2. Let's find out who it is. My guest today is kind of the queen of The Traitors Australia because she is the mastermind of what I think the internet unanimously agrees is the standout iconic moment of the season. It's faithful turned traitor and finalist, Camille. Camille, welcome to The Trader. How are you doing? Oh my gosh, what an introduction. That was fantastic. I'm doing great and I can't wait to talk about The Traders Australia. Fantastic. Now, I, I believe you're not you're no stranger to the podcast. Is that right? I feel you've listened. I have listened. Of course I've listened. <laughs> Have I said anything outrageous in previous episodes and now you need to start a fight about it? Oh my gosh, <laughs> I need, need to know the question in advance so I could think about it. No, um, I did want to talk about the big moths that you've mentioned. <laughs> um, like Roger. Um, maybe we could discuss what makes a really, what's a really great faithful. Because you have mentioned some um, who are the best faith. Oh, that's right. Who are the best faithfuls and what that means. Um, but no, nothing else that I can think of. Okay. Okay. Maybe maybe I'll ask you something and it'll trigger some memory and it'll be like, wait a minute, Matthew, you said this terrible thing. <laughs> but we'll find out. Before we get there, before I launch into my questions for you, I'm going to introduce our game, The Trader Traitor. Our not-so-secret mission for this entire interview is to deceive one another. Our goal is to tell an undetected lie. It could be a lie about the show, about ourselves, about anything in the world, as long as it is a complete and utter fabrication, big or small. We are looking for fake facts as opposed to fake opinions. For example, you could lie and tell me that since the traitors, uh, you and Sam have become best friends and you've actually legally adopted him. However, you couldn't tell me that another traitors podcast is your favourite, which would be a fake opinion and so obviously a lie. Are you ready to play, Camille? I'm ready to play, yes. In that case, our game begins now. So, uh... Here we go. Camille, very early on, I have I have so many notes, so many questions. Very early on, um, in episode two, you suggested that the faithful should probably be looking at celebrity players as potential traitors, which to me was very logical. Uh, did did you stick to that plan? Did that plan did that catch on? Were other people paying attention to that? Or did you soon forget about it? Um so my strategy, so overall strategy in this game for longevity was to not be threatening, to not stand out, and this fine balance between working out who the traders are and sort of flying a bit under the radar. So I always had to give something, and that was one of my things. You know, that was just, you know, whether or not it caught on or not wasn't, didn't really worry me. It was just that I'm participating as opposed to, say, someone like Gloria or Ian who really were so quiet, who didn't give any strat chat, who didn't give any names, who sort of sat back so much. So um, I can't even really remember saying that. Was that episode <laughs> two? Um, I think the other thing, and I'm going to be really, really honest with you, is that as much as I had seen the US traders and that, there was a mix of celebrities and non-celebrities. When I walked into that hotel and we were the last car to arrive, I, I, I was actually shocked. So I've never been on TV before. I had an adjustment period to get used to the cameras being mic'd up. And here, oh, my God, I walked in, saw the celebrities, 
And I thought, oh, gosh, this is there's an unfairness to this in that they're so versed in cameras and how it all works and reality TV just generally. Um, I just felt like that was an advantage to them. Um, and so I didn't mind if all of them left. Not all, sorry. Because when I process that, I then process that these some of these can be wonderful shields and that's where... Luke came in for me, being an ex-survivor player and someone who who was a villain but such a likeable villain. He was so social and such a good player in Survivor, um, you know, and backstabbing was his bread and butter. So he would befriend and betray and he was someone who you, I could easily throw out as a name if I needed to because one of my other strategies and other preparation for the game, which I never even needed, was that if I was at banishment um, and my name suddenly came out, I didn't want to ever be not prepared with, with another name or someone else more threatening than me. So, And I would always appeal as opposed to the others that sometimes would say you're dum-dums if you really want someone to do something for you, you appeal to their intelligence. So I would say I know everybody's smart enough to understand to, that that name, Luke's name, needs to be written down before my name. You know, if if I was being attacked, then it would just deflect. To Luke, Luke was a wonderful shield and I didn't want him to go Yeah. for that reason. Now, what was the original question? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, you, the question you've answered it was about the... the the your oh, the theory celebrities. that celebrities sh- will probably be traitors and oh, therefore you can and, pay attention to them. Yeah, exactly. And without a doubt, so when you look at the US traitors, at least one is going, at least one's going to be, you know. And my, my simple theories that I put out to the group was once Ash was discovered as a traitor, let's just focus on the blokes. One, but it's just time to look at the males because it's not likely that three of the traitors... By the way, we didn't actually know exactly the number, but you just assumed it was three. Um, yeah, the, you know, one of them would, the next one, let's at least focus on the male. So that's just me putting it out there because I'm not, I'm a useful faithful, you know, that that sort of thing. That's putting out some basic stuff um, and to show you the, the who I was playing with. When I put that out there, so out of the three traders, Ash has been identified, let's focus on the guys. Liam says, and the third one must be a female. And I was like, well, well, you understand my rationale for the second one's probably a male. The third one could probably be either, right? And he's like, no, the third one's a female. So that's the sort of player, you know how we've talked about how hopeless some of the faithfuls are. That was his rationale and the way he thought. So I was like, how is your brain coming to that conclusion? But okay. <laughs> I think a lot of, con- yeah, a lot of um, conclusions were come to by some of the faithful that were very confusing. But <laughs> I know. And frustrating to play and frustrating to watch. I can, <laughs> I, I can, I do think like the editors did an amazing job to get to the point where viewers we're sort of manipulated enough to be, at the, by the end, you're like, no one deserves to win. And I, I truly believe the editors worked back. They knew my the ending. They knew what had happened. And they just worked back. The faithfuls are going to be so bad. The villains are going to be so unlikable. They're not, they're not Luke Toki in Survivor. We all wanted him to win. He was so sneaky and would backstab people, but, man, we wanted him to win. The, we didn't have those sort of traitors. Yeah, that makes sense. Now that you watch the episodes back from a different perspective as a, as a viewer rather than a player, were you surprised? Was there anything, apart from the identity of the traitors, was there anything that really surprised you that you hadn't realised as a player or any sort of aspects of people that you saw differently watching it on TV? <sighs> Um, well, watching on TV, I found out things like Simone had both shields yeah. as a faithful under breakfast and not disclosing that, wasting valuable faithfuls like time and energy thinking about who's got the shield. Like we wasted time at breakfast on only a trader wouldn't dis- disclose that. Like there was a lot of energy wasted if 
that makes sense. Um, yeah. So what did I see back? No, nothing else was too amazing. Like, oh, you know what actually shocked me was that players would sabotage the, ga- the, the missions so that we actually got less money. Like, were you not there to win and to win the most money you could? Um, okay, I understand the hill run. The hill run when Sam is just so cocky and throws his champagne or whatever, and that was not anonymous. You know, when you got went to, for the temptation and, and Roger says, this is anonymous, you can give up your silver bar for this. It wasn't anonymous. We went to the top of the hill and somebody said, did you take – the, the temptation, you know, like it wasn't a secret. It was like, so everybody knew who took what. And I I knew that they had wasted silver bars for a beer or a protein. I knew that. But what I didn't know was in the torture mission, the ice one and the electrocution, um, that they deliberate. I, I thought something was really strange. My question that I got um, was who was the most faithful in the game? Now, I've never ever t- I never talked to anyone about Keith being so faithful. Yet yeah, the other group said that Keith. I would say Keith. So I was like, something's not right here. Um, what is going on? But I didn't think they deliberately threw it. So yes, that was actually quite shocking to me that they would throw out like other people around in that group. I can understand Sam being like that and Luke thinking it's really funny, maybe. Um, but. Simone was there and other players that I sort of never trusted. I wouldn't say trusted, but I, I sort of thought I was I could work with. Yeah, so that was a bit of a shock. Um, no, but nothing else that I can think of watching. No, I sort of knew it all, what was about to happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, that mission was definitely something I was going to ask about, the where you were carrying the silver bars up there hell and there were these bribes offered yeah it, it i mean as a viewer i think it probably warmed people to you because you were like i know i'm not taking this absolutely not no yeah. question it, so it must have been Sorry. so infuriating to get to the end and then realize like six or seven other people all took bars i know i know so the one and only so i accepted that the editing is as it is and it's out of my control and just to sit back and enjoy the show right so some of the other contestants maybe when we sort of chatted in whatsapp and that sort of stuff they were like oh, i haven't got any air time and i you know a bit of a complaint about the editing um that's not i don't worry about anything like that i just accepted it it is what it is but the one thing i was like what did they they edited out i ran up that hill the same amount of times as Sam. They did only show two of my offers. I actually got three offers and I got three silver bars and that was the only thing I was like, thing about the editing. Um, but look, part of me, so yes, I am an absolute team player and I believe that the missions are a place where you can collectively work for that common good of getting the silver up for the winner to take the most. So, um I do, and I, I still in the back of my mind, that, so that is truly who I am, but I at no point wanted to show myself as anything but sort of selfless, the sharer. That, that was in my mind even then, that I was a team player, you could trust me. So, you know, even at breakfast when we're sitting at the table and, you know, there's one hash brown left, I don't take it, I offer it. You know what I mean? If we all wanted the watermelon, I offered the watermelon. I wasn't there scoffing it down or doing whatever. And exactly the same in the missions. Um, you give it your all. And um, the other thing was there's this slight thing about um, in some of the other. So when I looked at the other series, what comes up, and it's actually come up just now in, in Traders Canada, where if you're not great at a mission, that that might be a reason. If you're up for, like, if it's this person or this person, well, this person just doesn't contribute as much in the missions, not helping to the, the common goal of the money. Well, you know what? Let's murder them or let's whatever. So I also wanted to not be hopeless at missions and to be seen as a really va- valuable player on that, le- on you know, on that level. Yeah, so, um, yes, at the end I was shocked that so many silver bars were taken, um, but, you know, 
I, I was hoping that that others would see that as so selfish and that they couldn't be trusted, those players. Because what you guys didn't see was that after that we had a mission, uh, no, a shield challenge where we were throwing the axe. Yeah. And when we stood up there, we had to say who we were throwing it at and why. And that okay. wasn't actually explained. So I went up there each time I was like, I'm going for Liam because he gave up a silver bar for a beer, everyone. They all heard <laughs> that Liam can't be trusted. He's an individual player. Don't trust him. And I also did that. to. I had to be equal with Sam. And I was like, at that time, I was a trader. Um, yes, I was a trader by then. So, But I was still Sam for taking it, you know, doing the protein shake. Blah, there you go. So I had to be shown that. And Sam laughed at me for that. But the message that I wanted to get across, if the faithfuls could hear anything, was that these people are not team players. Yeah. Probably also um, a bit of stress relief as well to just throw an axe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Sam, this is for you for that Tam Silver bar. <laughs> for sure. No, the imagery, you're, at, you're throwing an axe at their faces. Like... <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I, I thought about that. Other people were just sort of like, oh, it's like a target. But I suppose it just goes to how deep a thinker you actually are and how sort of surface level thinking you can be. Yeah, yeah. Oh, when I look back, actually, you know when um when Sam's in the armory yes. and he picks up swords and he does all this sort of business and um that was stuff that I obviously hadn't seen. How cocky. I knew he was cocky. I knew he had an ego. I knew that he was entitled. He was this entitled guy. Um, but I didn't know the extent. Yeah. Yeah. Another mission I wanted to ask about actually is the sort of minefield challenge uh, where you have all the statements and you have to pick what's true and what's not. One of them uh, that you encountered was this phrase or this statement that says some people here are not who they say they are. Did you? Oh, that feel, was awesome. Did you feel that was kind of about you that you were you were part oh, of the reason I, whether or not that was true? I had no doubt that anyone who went up to that, like there were so many people there that they're not really telling us who they really are. That could just be a general traders aren't telling us who they really are they're telling us they're faithful people like me who just didn't want to disclose everything not because i believe that and i never once said being a former fed um helps me in this game the producers asked me that many times in my testimonials how does it help that you're being an ex-fed you know and i'm like it doesn't help <laughs> it doesn't help much it's a very different, investigating a crime as a federal agent is you were in a team of gun investigators, you got all these resources. If there was a real murder, there's a crime scene, there's blood, there's, there's forensic analysis, there's um, interviews. You can talk to people and work out their alibis. You know, you know, there's a whole lot that goes into an investigation. It's not just like this gang. Um, so when the producers, when they'd ask me in those testimonials, I'd say things like mm, possibly staying calm under pressure, if that's a federal police thing. Um, but the other thing is that's the narrative, Matthew, that they went with. I'm a former fed, that's true. Before that, I was a lawyer. Before that, I was a professional skateboarder. Like I was sponsored for skateboarding. Oh, you're going to think that's my life. It's not my life. <laughs> I really was. <laughs> a you know, I was sponsored for skateboarding. Um, and the other thing that I do is I'm actually a treasure hunter, which means we go gold panning. We go looking for gold. We go metal detecting, looking for old coins and relics. We go magnet fishing in the lakes, big magnets on ropes, and we, we haul out you know, no no treasure chests at the moment, but we've hauled, my kids and I, we haul out, you know, a scooter or a bike or talk, different things. Anyway, so part of the reason I actually applied for the show wasn't because I'm an ex-fed, was because I'm a treasure hunter and I wanted to hunt for silvers. Um, that was one of my reasons, but the narrative they went with was there's an ex-fed and there's an undercover cop. So that's that. 
And by the end of this season, we get the impression that you never did speak to anyone about that. Is, is that the case? I did not. And the only reason is I did not want tra- the traders to think that being an ex-Fed would be some sort of threat. And that's the main thing with anyone, whether that's Roha who says he worked in retail but he was really some other job in fashion, just downplaying your smarts really. Yeah, yeah. How I wanted to ask a question about voting in the banishment room and sort of your tactics for that. Um, one episode you voted for Sarah and I think you were the only person who voted for Sarah and it made me think you were probably voting quite independently, um, even though that can be a really dangerous tactic in this game. So I guess I just generally wanted to ask how, what, how did you approach voting? Did you always want to just go with your instinct and genuinely vote for who you were suspicious of? Or were you really thinking very politically and in terms of numbers and all yep. that stuff? Yeah, I was never voting for a trader. And I know that's awful for the viewers to hear that we don't write down who we think a trader is. We write, so there's a, oh, the layers are, as long as it's not me, um, I need to be seen as a faithful. I need to be seen as not a threat to the traders. So, so for example, you don't want to write down a trader's that sort of name. Oh, it's so hard to explain. Where do I go with banishment? I, I, I basically don't want to stand out. Yeah. At that time, when that vote for Sarah, she was my scapegoat. Sarah could always just be the scapegoat. And the reason I didn't want to vote for Ian um, and I didn't want to vote for Liam was because I if either of them, I didn't know who was actually going to go. I thought it was going to be really close. I needed to take a faithful with me further in the game who may have been able to help me towards the end. I needed someone who believed me. And Keith was never going to be that person. Um, like there were just people that I, like Hannah, like I just couldn't. Those two were gullible enough and liked me enough, I thought, that I for my end game. So I really broke the the whole game into a beginning, a middle and an end. You need to get to the end. And this was my downfall with someone who completely trusts you as a faithful. Yeah. Yeah. Or the other option for me was to be with a trader who completely trusted me. And we can probably get to that, but that didn't happen either. <laughs> yeah. So can we, I, I, this feels weird that I'm going to ask you a big question about another player but okay. I, it's such a big moment. I feel like I have to ask everybody this. So I'll pro- tomorrow I'm interviewing uh, Roha and Blake. So I'll probably ask them this as well. Can we please talk about the banishment of Annabelle? Because yes. other than the finale episode, I think viewers agree this is sort of the big, big moment of the season. Um, once, but what I want to ask you about it is once Annabelle was banished and it was and it was it became clear she was a faithful did it then immediately strike you that her theories about sam were probably right uh, you know as a viewer we're sort of screaming oh, but pay attention pay attention to yep. watch but does it really feel like that in the game so in the game okay so annabelle i know you love her and we <laughs> love her Viewers, and I've heard things like she was the best faithful. Now, if she was the best faithful, why wasn't she at the end? Like she was fantastic at identifying traitors. But if you don't do anything great, if you can't convince the others, then how good is that information? Like if you can't convince the others to actually banish that traitor, if then then that information, as we saw, was pretty, wasn't, just wasn't used correctly. Now, Annabelle, as you know, is a bit extra, okay? So how am I going to say this? So so this is Annabelle, the percept, so when Annabelle comes to banishment, that was really last minute for us. We already had some ideas about banishing, and, yes, Annabelle's name had come up. Um, 
she comes out with this really long okay so you guys as viewers saw testimonials and you saw a snapshot of banishment her speech i can't remember if you um saw her speech about corinne as well the very first banishment we saw annabelle you know give this amazing speech about why Corinne is a traitor and we all and some of us voted for Corinne and she got banished. We already have seen Annabelle come out with these sort of speeches and it wasn't accurate. So you've got people in the room like Liam, small country town Tasmanian, 21 years old, old school copper Keith, calls her sweetheart, right? That's so and later calls her the master manipulator. You've got people in the room who don't like her you've got um hannah the personality stuff so where am i going with this so when annabelle comes out with that it's clear as it's so clear to the viewers to the banishment room here's annabelle going off because like it's it wasn't until luke jumped in on a grenade when he really didn't need to he could have just sat back where i knowing luke's survivor game like he just threw himself under the bus so i knew there was truth and that's why i then it was luke's jumping on that that made me make my decision that the next banishment is sam so i did take on board what annabelle said after that and if sam was right blake was next but Annabelle not only gave us, she's like, I gave you all the information, Camille. I'm like, you gave us too much information, Annabelle. We have one name. We can only write down one name. We have one bullet in that gun. Stick with Sam. That's already where you've got most of your information. She lost the group because she started, she went for Blake. And the information about Blake was his reaction to Ian, which wasn't enough. It might have been enough for the viewers. It wasn't enough for us. Um, but it was enough for me that Luke jumped on. That was enough and it was Sam for me and then it was Blake. So I was on but nobody else was on. Um, so then that next vote, that was the Simone one after that where we did try and get some revenge for Annabelle and Luke um, and then I was recruited after that. So I wrote down Sam that night, Blake wrote down Sam and so did Simone and that's where Sam after banishment, you saw him frothing at Blake. You saw yeah. him doing the evils and why did you vote for me? Um, and that was like, guys, wake up. I thought I was going to be murdered that night, to be honest, because I wrote down Sam. And I'm like, Simone's gone. You two are the traitors. I'm going to be murdered because I wrote down Sam. Anyone that goes for Sam is out. So, um <laughs> Oh, the timing was just brilliant, absolute fantastic timing for me, and that's where a little bit of luck came in because a recruited trader has so much power. But it's just advantageous. There are so many advantages to being a recruited trader. I've already established myself as a trusted faithful. The only time my name had been written down was when Sarah randomly, my mum told me to always trust my gut business, um, and did that. Um, Sarah bless she gave us some good moments though didn't she up the hill my sciatic car like crawling on her hands and knees we still laugh about that we laugh out loud thinking about that we all have a bit of a laugh um <laughs> yes so that was annabelle and i've since spoken to annabelle so many times about strategy and she's like we never what was so important was your car when you first arrived and we saw the bond that Sam, Luke, Annabelle and Gloria had, which to me was an alliance, which borders on, here we go, I'm going to be controversial, it borders on breaking the rules because it clearly states in the rules you must not have an alliance with a traitor. And once they worked out that one of them was a traitor, I, don't, I think when they worked out Sam was a traitor, Gloria continuing with that alliance all the way to the end was actually against the rules. Anyway, that's my little piece of controversial bit of information. <laughs> you mentioned the recruitment right there because, yeah, right after that, very soon after this, uh, you were recruited. Did you ever have any doubts about accepting that or were you very quickly, like, you, you did you realise 
straight away that this is an incredible advantage? Oh, absolutely new. Um, I got that note under the door. I actually did think I was going to be murdered. Um, and I thought, oh, this is how they do it because nobody tells you how you get murdered. Um, and I read it and I was like, yes. Then the, that was the only time producers asked me if, oh, no, there's another time where, uh, so this is the only time they said, could you just be a little bit more suspenseful? And so I had to be like, oh, I've been a faithful for so long. How, what am I going to do? Um, you know, and no, right. That night, that was so late. So that night I was actually in bed in pyjamas and I got a tap tap on my door and I thought, oh, I'm murdered for sure. Um, and that's where they said, can you get back into your clothes from today? And we want to come in and do some filming. Yeah. So then I went off to Traders Towers where um, I saw that, Oh, surprise, surprise. It was Blake and Sam. Um, that's where we all got our code names, which you guys as viewers didn't get to see. You thought Sam just called himself the sheriff. That was his <laughs> That was his traitor code name. Blake was the marshal and wait for it, I was the secret weapon. <laughs> Little did they know, they didn't know that I was a secret weapon for the faithful. Yeah. And the viewers. Yeah, so we had, the, we had those um those code names, um, which I thought was really cool. And then later on, we even had a team song. <laughs> you think this is one of my lies? I promise you, it's not. We had when we had opportunity to um, be together, we would whisper our song. And you can ask Blake about this if you want. If you're interviewing him, um, our team song um, was a bit of a chant. But we had an opportunity in our car ride in the final mission. Um, because it was the three traders, we decided to all go together and um, we chanted our song. Do you want to hear it? Of course. <laughs> of course I want to hear it. And I remember it. Can you ask Blake if he remember? He wouldn't remember it, but we sort of start off like a whisper, like it's a secret, and then we yell it like nobody can hear us. Um, and it goes, let me just think. <clears throat> It's a chant, okay? So it goes, one, two, traders coming for you. Three, four, better lock your door. Five, six, gonna get our fix. Seven, eight, better stay up late. Nine, ten, gonna murder again. But by nine, ten, we are like screaming at nine, ten, gonna murder again. <laughs> anyway, that was all part of our bonding so that we all felt I had to enhance our bonding. Like I had to make them feel close to me. And so things like introducing our team chant and just hanging out and stroking Sam's ego and, and Blake, um, Blake, oh, Blake. I really, Matthew, wanted to work with Blake. He is a nice guy, um, just, just, a, just a good person and I can talk about it now, we can talk about it after, but, yeah, I really did want to get to the end with him. After you were recruited then, how tricky was it to adjust your behaviour or maybe I should ask to try not to adjust your behaviour from that point on? Right, you got absolutely hit the nail on the head. You try to not adjust your behaviour. You have to remain consistent. Um, and that was sort of my way the whole way through in that I was always respectful of other people's opinions. Even when Liam would say um, the third trader must be a female, I'd be like, oh, that's an interesting way to think about it. I, I never really put anybody down because I never knew when I would need to work with them and I never wanted to ruffle feathers and I wanted to or, I always tried to say things that made them want like to really positive. So I love doing the missions with you. So much fun. Um, always am suggesting that they, they, they're they faithful, trader or faithful. I would always tell everybody I thought they were faithful because I didn't want, but not in that way. So Luke told everybody he had their back. He said the same thing. You, I've got your back. You don't go around saying the same thing to everybody because it it doesn't seem sincere and we would talk about it Luke told me so that was great for me because it was part of my thing if I needed to attack or, or put someone else out at banishment then it was going to be him and that was one of the reasons 
So I would that say things, even to Annabelle, I'd say, mate, we never get in the car together. We never do missions. And I'd always just say to her, I'll always know. I would subtly say what an asset to the team faithful as you are. You are so smart. You know, I say things like that, right? So it's sort of, um, where were, what was the original question? Oh, how did I just, um, so it was fine. You know, my biggest thing, so going down to breakfast that morning. So Matthew, when there's no murder, so everyone would say to me, oh, do you know what, you know, the last people that come in at breakfast are probably considered for murder. Yeah, we know that, right? That's a no-brainer. Everybody, everyone should know that. But do you know who comes in last when there's no murder? A traitor comes in last in every other series. A traitor comes in last when there's no murder. And that's a level of understanding the game that I just, I knew the others wouldn't get it, but Blake came in last on my recruitment when there was no murder. And I thought, oh, if only, I really wanted them to start, the faithfuls, to start thinking about Sam and Blake. My my goal at, straight away as a recruited trader was to think how, what can I do now to work with these faithfuls to off a trader? But none of my testimonials were explained. Nothing was has come out and that's okay because it's suited right through to they needed to show the shock value of, wow, Camille at the end did that. And it was a shock moment. Like when I look back at Gogglebox, when they, when I, I got to see <laughs> inside people's lounge rooms in their living rooms of them screaming and jumping. And that was amazing. That was amazing to see. And that so many messages I've got of people saying that's how we were at that end. So, um, so there wasn't much change. No one noticed that it was Blake, a trader who came in last, but that's never set in stone either. Um, the last person to come in is probably a faithful, but we're not sure, you know, you're not 100% sure. You can't just rely on that. Um, I came in last one breakfast and I think that's because I mentioned to somebody else. I was like, oh, my God, the producers are doing this to me because I mentioned to someone else. I think it might have been Annabelle came in last and I said to Annabelle, you know what that means? And because she was crying because she came in last and I'm like, you know what that means? So um, anyway, I, and then I was like, I feel like they put me last because I mentioned that and they're listening all the time to what you're saying. So, yeah. So there wasn't too much change after being a trader and they were so hopeless. The faithfuls had not knowing the rules, like, Oh, faithful can hang on. A trader can murder themselves. Like even even explaining it in that terminology. So a trader can pretend to murder themselves and wear the shield. Like it was just confusing. The faithfuls were just so confused. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, so faithful. Yes. <laughs> Thinking back to it now. now we've talked about him already, but well, we've talked about him a little bit, but we can't not talk about him again. We have to talk a little bit about uh, Sam. Um, yes. One of my biggest questions as a viewer and an obsessive fan is why didn't you try and take out Sam before the finale? And I, and I, and I understand you were saying, well, early on, you've got to be really, really sure it's going to work. Um, otherwise, you can't really vote yeah. for traitors at, the, at banishment. I'm thinking more maybe towards like, Episode eight, right, right near the end, it seems like mm. you and Blake really were considering turning on Sam and getting him out, but it just didn't happen. Yet you ended up banishing Gloria. Why? Mm -hmm. Why at the last minute didn't didn't you go for Sam? So I had to rely on you. You can't play this game solo. And I, any time I went to Blake to say. Let's do it. Um, he just didn't want to play. He just wanted to go with Sam and whether or not, and I sort of feel like Blake at that point, and maybe you can ask him when you speak to him, why didn't he want to go with me? I put it to him at final. So Gloria, um, I we weren't so forceful, but by the final five, I actually thought that Blake, because Liam, I wanted to go with Liam. I thought, oh, my God, this is something I was going to work with. But Liam comes out and says, 
Sam and Camille, you're the traitors. When he didn't need to on that final five where we all know there's not going to be a murder and because that's how well, we think when there's not going to be a murder because that's what's happened in other series. But he didn't know that and he blurts out Camille and Sam are the traitors. So he smartly says, I only going to go for one. I can only go for one. I want to go for Sam first, but Camille was going to be second. So there was no way I was going to work with Liam to get out Sam if I knew he was going to go for me. I thought if anything, that's where Blake would turn on us and Blake would so go with Liam and Sarah would probably, you just never knew what Sarah was going to do, but there was a possibility for Blake. But when we did get out um, Liam, I did want to work with Blake. Uh, and we need to go back to the other question, which was about Sam, but I did want to work with Blake to vote with Sarah and off Sam and then Blake and I vote Sarah. I think that Blake didn't accept that from me because I think he thought maybe girl power, the girls will stick together and banish him. Um, and I think that he didn't have a good enough relationship with Sarah to think that he could work with her to banish me. So I don't know. I, I don't really want to speak for him, but I did want to work with Blake and I don't know why he didn't go with me, to be honest. Like there was, I can't think of any reason apart from the hold that Sam had over Blake and that by then Sam was, Blake, Blake was physically exhausted. Like he says, my body is built for beer and he wasn't, like he had a great time at these missions, but they exhausted him. And I think being a traitor for so long, and by then, if you didn't have the mental toughness, you were you were tired. I was cool. I was fine and still of right mind, I felt, but I could understand the exhaustion. Like it could be exhausting. Now, why did everyone follow Sam? When you're not prepared for a game, like when you come in to play the traitors and you're so hopeless, you haven't watched Traders beforehand. You don't even really know the rules. Like you haven't even read the You had opportunity to read rules. Like to, to even rules like Gloria would write a name down at banishment and then scribble it out. It clearly states in the rules, your first, the first one you write is the one you present. You are not to scribble out names. So I, I was like, you never read, you don't know the rules. So, so. When you are weak and flaky and not confident and then you have someone who is confident and somewhat forceful and at times even aggressive, it can be intimidating but also someone you can just have lead you. So why did everyone keep turning? Because of the bunch of faithfuls that we were, not being confident, not being strong, not being able to make decisions and then having this little bit of being a bit scared and intimidated by Sam, you just they just went with him. And no one really, after Annabelle left, no one was strong enough. And I feel it because see how he turned on Blake when he wasn't banished. Remember at the table. See even at the end where there were, you, you still turned on me. And the other reason I decided when I, I was like, ultimately, I'm going to go because I can only rely on myself now. I'm going to go and maybe one of them, maybe Blake will write, share, and I still might win some money. I'm going to go because I have control. So that's why I went to Trader's Dilemma. The other reason is if you banish him and he does go, I reckon he'd pull a bit of a Kieran the way he did on Wilf in the UK series where you, he outs you. He does something, he says something, he wouldn't go quietly and respectfully. He would feel so betrayed and you did this and I'm an OG trader and I'm so entitled. Like that's who he is in real life, like, and how he played, like, that put that way. Um, yeah, I think he would out me at banishment. I don't think he would allow me to just take it. I think it would have been a big fight. So did that make all did that make sense, Matthew? Yeah, absolutely. And actually you answered my next couple of questions as well, which is perfect. Cause I was gonna ask, did that mean that you did you go into the the finale or the end game kind of already knowing 
that it was maybe a bit futile? Going into the end game where there was just three of us or four of us or, or what part is the end game to you? Uh, well, both. The, the the final episode and the... Well, actually, let's just, just go for the final... Even the final episode when there were still four of you. Did you sort of think, this can't work out, Sam is never going to share this money? You know what? I did play in my mind. So when there was the final four of us, Sarah, Blake, me, Sam... I was thinking if Sarah's going to write Sam, I could just, regardless of Blake, I could take it to a tie break. And the way it works in a tie break is that the two that whose names were not written down, we could consult. And if we come to a unanimous decision, so it would force Blake to work with me um, and we would come to a unanimous decision. And he would definitely do that because if you can't come to a unanimous decision of Sarah or Sam, I really should have done that. Um, then then you give the power to the other two. So then if you can't come to a unanimous decision, then Sarah and Sam get to make the decision on me and Blake. So you would definitely come to a unanimous decision. And that I really should have forced him to do that and then forced and then said, mate, our only option is to write down Sarah and then that then we get to share the money. Oh, it's just so hard at the time. And one of the hardest things is you really don't get a lot of time. You don't get a lot of time to talk to people. You don't, all of a sudden it's like off, like you get told, stop talking, quiet, like, and that's the end of it. And you're like, <laughs> you know, so, so yes. Did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Um, I, th- I think I definitely know the answer to this next one, but I'm going to ask anyway. Did any part of you <laughs> ever think of just, kind of giving up, just writing, share, and just letting no, the boys I, have it? No part of me. I'm I'm entitled to play my game, and that was my game. And I know you discussed this with David Bloomberg in the in your review of the, the finale. Um, should Camille have just written share because then someone wins um, and they did play well enough and all that stuff? Um Hell no, I would never roll over. That was my game and my game. And if it meant blocking, the other thing I truly believe is that some reality TV shows reward bullying, narcissistic sort of behavior um, with massive prizes and popularity. And because I'm, I only just started Instagram because of the traders. They said, we're going to be sending you some stuff. Can you put this out on some social media? Like, I'm not interested in, I lo- you know, in followers. It's not, it's not my thing. It's you, some people might have been on the show to get more followers. That's their thing. They're influencers. Um, it, the agenda might not have been anywhere near to try and find traders. Like we all had our reasons for being on the show, and mine was to have a bit of a break from my kids and a bit of my, you know, and to do something for myself and to treasure hunt and to, you know, test myself as an older female. Like, um. It wasn't because of my social media and I want to get followers. Um, I was never, and I, you know, I got to the end. It wasn't an accident, Matthew. I really worked my way through ducking and weaving and avoiding a banishment and avoiding a murder. It's a really hard job. Like it's really hard being a faithful. And the good faithfuls unfortunately become threats. So it's a really hard game to play if you want to play to get to the end yeah the power is with the traders murdering every night fantastic you're already a step ahead and it's actually not that hard to turn faithfuls on faithfuls you're removing yourself out in the banishment to just make make it liam go against you know Ian, whatever like they're removed and they're just watching this happen yeah but no, I was never going to get to the end and say, yes, boys, you deserve it. And especially to Sam, because like you guys saw a little snapshot of that ending where he had a bit of a personal attack on me. You should have just get written share. And that's what a rich person would say. I know David Bloomberg in your in your review of the final said I should have counted that. And but that's irrelevant to me. Um I'm not rich, by the way, um, but 
It's not the point. The point is don't personally attack someone. Um, it's not right. And I, I wonder, and maybe you can ask Blake this, and if you do interview Sam, that would be amazing. I would love to do an interview with a few people where we could sort of say, hey, that's not my inter. That's not what I remember or the way you're explaining that is not what maybe happened. Um, yes. Um, what was I going to say? Could you just remind me what we're talking uh, about? Uh, Sam kind of at the end throwing a tantrum essentially and kind of going off yeah. the one. And yeah, that's, yeah. that's exactly what I was oh. going to ask about, you know, how, how do you, how do you react to that? How long did he go on for? <laughs> oh yeah. Look, um, and, it was a while. It was a while. Um, and Blake was very upset and the viewers saw that. With the, He wasn't upset the whole time and there were a few questions. He did actually speak and he talked about his regrets during the show and his regrets and he might tell you about them. Um, but one of them was obviously recruiting Camille, he said, um, but one of his other regrets was not have, murdering Luke earlier. Yeah. I was interested because I, oh, David, David Bloomberg said I should have counted that and said something that's right about being rich. But I don't, I don't need to. Like it didn't, uh, stay classy. Like, oh, that's what I was going to say. Do you think, and maybe Blake, this is, a, this is a question I'd love Blake to answer. Like if it was Luke and not me standing there, if it was a male, a reality TV star, anyone, someone with a lot of followers, someone who's just not a mum from Canberra, like if you knew where I live, it's a big country town, you know. Um, so if it was somebody else, would Sam have said, well played? Would, would, would they have had a personal attack? Like you should have shared and you, that's what a rich person and um, you're, you're just a recruited trader. Would he have said those things and had the dummy spit and been, would he still have acted so so, so entitled? if it was a guy and if yeah. it was a popular, mm -hmm. was it just me? Oh, I don't know. Or was it that he felt so hopeless and so played because I did convince him that I was a share. I did convince him that I wasn't a greedy person, that he could trust me. I just played him. You know, I am a very loyal person, but I'm not loyal when it's not deserved. Yeah. I think uh, throughout the show, Sam Sam was really infuriating to watch, and I could all I could kind of always justify it to myself by saying, "Well, you know, it's a game, and he's he's playing a character, and it's just a persona that he's adopting for the sake of TV, and he wants to get followers." But I, I think at that last moment is when I thought, "Well, actually, the game's over, and he's still behaving like that." So. That's probably the most revealing part of all of this is that he he doesn't yeah. just say, "Oh yeah. man, good game, lost." He he can't yeah. let go of it. And I thought, "Oh, yeah. you you really are angry that you're you're not the top dog here." <laughs> yeah. Look, I tried my hardest to convince him. I would say things like, "Australia's going to love you." A trader who gets to the end and then has this honor amongst the traders and and riding share wow, people are just going to love you, Sam. Oh, my God. You know, and I'd say to Blake, um, Blake, I know you're going to share. Like it's, you know, I, I just, I tried my best to convince them. Best case scenario for me of, was that I win all the money and then half the money and then none of us win. So there was no way I was going to hand that over um, at all. No. I want, I'd like to know Blake's take on that finale. I haven't heard much from Blake. Oh, so look, they were dirty that night. So I went in, I walked off because one, I was freezing. There were those giant moths. Um, there was, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, we were out there for hours. It would have been close to 1130. Like, like, as in we were standing there doing this for hours and we did go through the whole banishment, throw the thing in the fire, the blood, the red or the green, but if none of that, none of that was there. So um, I was super cold anyway and I was like, do I need it? I'm not taking any more of this. It's all over now. So and he was still going on about whatever he was going on about, Sam. Blake did not personally attack me at all um, and I went in and I went in and, 
I did one last testimonial, which I don't think was played. Um, but then I went and drank champagne and <laughs> in the control room where um, they replayed that for me, like, you know, the big screens and all that, where we, it was an absolute no-go zone. You were not allowed to go in there. Um, and I was went in there and I drank some champagne and I asked if Sarah could come down from her room and they said no and it was just me and I heard the boys were sooking um, in their rooms and that's how they ended their show, which sucks. We all could have just cheers something for the game that was, but it, it wasn't meant to be. Um, I reached out to both of them um, and said, uh, you know, no hard feelings. I hope you guys are selling back into normal life. This is when we got our phones back a week later, we're all home. Um, and I got no reply. And I tried again, just in case they missed my first message, like a loser, I tried again. Um, <laughs> and again, no reply. So I can't, I'm actually quite shocked by Blake not replying, not even like, oh, look, it's all fine. But I can understand Sam. Because if you get to interview him, I truly believe the person on the traders was Sam. Yeah, and he may now be rewarded. He's put out there that he'd like to be on some other TV shows and other things, and and he may be rewarded for that because he makes great TV. Yeah. Yeah, great. I don't know how great it is. It's not something that I love to watch, and I certainly couldn't reward that. And it was a great moment, and I've had so much positive feedback about that final moment. Um, yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned the moths and that it's not my imagination <laughs> and that I'm not, not your seeing things. <laughs> yeah. no. Hey, you mentioned before that you're a, a massive fan, and I know you are because of the trader, and uh, I, it's something you may not know. So when I went into the control room and we were talking about um, – the traders and they were saying, oh, the trader, people think there's going to be a traders all stars. They are looking at only in a, in a hypothetical. And by the way, they don't think there's going to be a season three Australia, but who knows? Um, that was mentioned in, in the circle that night only. I haven't heard since, but they talked about something that I hadn't heard of, which was a fans and favorites traders. So it's all the fans and all the favorites. So people like Annabelle, the Lukes. I don't know who else were the favourites from season one or other traders, but realistically, do you think that could even happen? That's I actually was kind of my last question is would you oh. go back for an all stars? <laughs> I, I I really would, definitely, because I just think it's so much fun. Um and I want to play with a cast that knows what's going on. Um <laughs> when I watched Traders New Zealand, I was like, I want to play with them. And even Canada, I was like, I want to play with you where the traders are, I love traders that play the game and are strategic and, you know, lie. That's absolutely fine. But we played with someone who was pretty aggressive and a bit of a bully and that's just my take on it. It's not, I don't want to influence or you take what you saw out of the show, but it wasn't always nice, you know, it he wasn't always a nice guy and the snippets that the viewers saw. So him at banishment when he's having a crack at Blake or just even, even gaslighting with Ash, making, you know what he pushed and pushed in that banishment and she blew up, you know, what, what did she say? Hold on, shut up for a minute, for a second. You know, when Ash did that and I felt for Ash, he was not letting her speak. Um, and I think it all then got turned on her. But wouldn't it have been amazing, Matthew, if Blake had sided with Ash? Wouldn't it have been a different game if when Sam goes to Blake and says, look, I'm going for Ash, I'm going for a fellow trader, he then goes to Ash, Blake then goes to Ash and says something like, Sam's coming for you. I want you to be able to trust me this whole game. We can work together. Imagine the bond and the trust you'd have. And we can turn on Sam because this is too early and this is not right. We need to be a team. I wonder, yeah. wonder how the game would have changed. Like there's all these points where you think it could have been a totally different game. You know, yeah. if we got Sam that night, the, the night after Annabelle got banished and Luke got murdered and I, Blake, and Simone wrote Sam, 
if the others didn't all suddenly turn on Simone, um, I wouldn't have been recruited. Yeah. We yeah. would have, you know, we would have banished Sam um, and then Blake probably would have recruited Keith, who he absolutely adored and they believed in each other so much. It would have been perfect. Yeah. Or actually, would he have done Keith? If Keith thought he was a faithful anyway, you would keep him as a faithful. You'd have to think about that long and hard about who. <laughs> or Blake could have, you know, been the sort of traitor. I just feel like Blake didn't have the backbone to, you know, the traitor that brings someone in to throw them under the bus. And that's when I first got recruited, I thought, crap, they've brought me in mm-hmm. to throw me under. And I yeah. said to them that not towers. I don't, I don't, it wasn't aired, but, you know, do not throw me under the bus. And I, I realise now that they brought me in, you know, I realised that they needed me to protect them and be that extra number to get them through because their plan was to steal. Yeah, yeah. It's really interesting hearing you talk about your impression of Sam because because he survives all the way till the end. I just always thought as a viewer everybody loves sam they all they all they're so charmed by him so it's really interesting to hear you say actually no he wasn't really that charming uh it's so that uh, i hadn't i just assumed everybody loved him and they thought he was funny and um but but you didn't see it that way honest i just don't like i absolutely stroked his (laughs) ego because that's what that sort of person needed like People like Liam thought he was amazing. People like Keith um, thought he's a good guy. Um, it just took certain people. Yeah. Look, I, I'm not sure if you get a chance, if you're going to be interviewing Liam, but um, the control that Sam had over Liam far out. I, I truly believe that Liam was the f- worst faithful and, uh, as much as Sarah was super clueless and flaky and unreliable, Liam did Sam's work for him. Yeah, he would yeah. be vocal. About it. He would point the finger that Sam wasn't pointing and then Sam would just suddenly, you know, get on board with it and make it look like it was a bit more Liam. Yeah. Camille, before we yes. finish our interview and conclude the game we've been playing, where can we find you online what should we know about what's going on with you okay so what you should know is that i'm a treasure hunter and we have a youtube channel called 10 targets detecting um it's because i'm not rich it actually uh we need a few more (laughs) subscribers so that pays for my kids pocket money my kids and i actually do that um it's called 10 targets because we go out and we find 10 cool things and we put it on youtube as a video um please go and just subscribe. Don't even have to watch. We've got some really loyal um, subscribers who managed to, you know, one of the things with YouTube is watch hours. So our watch hours are up there. We just need a few more subscribers. Then my kids can get their $5 pocket money. Um, I am on Instagram and most of my Instagram is about traders because I only started Instagram at the time of the traders coming out. So a lot of my followers are fans. So we talk traders and Traders Canada and different things. Um, And that's at Camille.Cheech. And that's it. Excellent. Now, we've been playing a game. We've been playing the Trader Traitor. So our mission throughout the interview was to lie to one another, to deceive one another. I confess, Camille, that I lied to you. And yeah. I think you lied to me too. Did you lie to me? I did. Okay. Yep. I, I'm i going to guess your lie first. Okay. I've written down a few notes of things that you said that I thought, hmm, that could be a lie. But I'm going to I'm gonna stick with my very first one. I'm going to write down the first thing I wrote down. And it was really early on, and you said that you'd never been on TV before. I, I, get, I wonder if that's your lie. Oh, wow. Um, I have not been on TV before. <laughs> oh, actually, does small things count? 
I have been on TV it only, if it's oh. It only counts if you meant it to be a lie. No, I did not mean that to be a lie. Look, and now I think about it, when I was 20, I was on a Japanese game show in Japan <laughs> because I can actually speak Japanese and I did live in Japan for a long time. Um, wow. And I was on the TV show over there this, this a long, long, long time. Like, do you know how old I am, Matthew? No. No, I okay, guess so I'm 49. People are like, oh, you're in your 40s. And I am I am 49, so I've been around the block and I did spend a bit of time in Japan. Um, by the way, I'm 49 and I ran up that hill three times just like Sam. Did I mention that? <laughs> you did. <laughs> um, no. So was I allowed to do two lies? Because sure. I – So t- one of my lies was about the time um, – I said it was about 11.30, close to midnight when we were doing uh, the thing. I, you did. It was actually, I did, I was quite a dramatic, I added a few hours. It was only about 9.30 at night. Okay. But also, but I, I only because I was like, um, I'm sorry for two lies, but the other lie was the fans and favourites. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> I, I totally believed that because it was so specific. I thought, oh. Okay, that's quite niche. That must be a thing that's being discussed. We didn't okay. talk about that. I went into the control room and I drank champagne and I hung out with my favourites um, from production. This one lady who would, she would always tell me to shush, right, because you weren't allowed to talk when the cameras weren't on you and you were waiting. <laughs> it was always so, it was sort of sexy. Like she'd go, stop talking, <laughs> stop talking to me. And sometimes she would touch me and, I, and, and I'd be like, and, um, and she would tell me not sort of bossed me around. Um, and I had a drink with her. That was great. Um, but we did not discuss fans versus favourites or anything to do with the show. You've been a traitor through and through. You totally <laughs> fooled me. I yeah. They weren't even they weren't even yeah. any of the guesses I wrote down on my little notepad. So well. Done. Would you have written share? Well, could I have convinced you to write share? No. Um Probably, possibly. Although the one t- I played, um, I played the traitors card game on holiday with my family, and I think they were h- horrified at how brutal I was. I was like stealing all the ways. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> so I just I didn't really... trust anyone. No, you just, and that's the hardest thing. Not trusting anyone is so hard when you do in the end, in the end game. I truly believe you need to get to the end with someone who completely trusts you. Yeah, yeah. And that was my downfall. Blake didn't trust me enough to go with me and vote out Sam and then vote. Uh, to me, it was a no-brainer. We vote out Sam. We vote out Sarah. The other thing was when you navigate that conversation with someone who we've made a decision, all three of us together, we've made a decision, we're going to get to the end and share you had to so I sort of had to be a bit gentle in my conversation with him because I still needed him to trust that I was going to write if if that wasn't going to happen I needed him to think I was going to share does that make sense so yeah it yeah. wasn't a full conversation yeah okay. but I had a lot of fun with Blake I look forward to listening to your podcast with him yeah 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 Camille what do you think I lied to you about oh my god I <sighs> I forgot totally. I didn't write anything down. Um, <laughs> write down about what did you lie about? Did you say something that you liked Sam and thought he might have should have won? No, that wouldn't have not, not have been a lie because that would have been too subjective. I don't know, Matthew. I was so focused on talking about the traders and slipping my lie in. I... <laughs> I just um, didn't listen attentively. Oh, I forgot to tell you. That was the other one I was going to do about the antique shop. You know oh, the yeah. antique shop mission? Um, that, so this is where my mind goes, right? In the antique shop, I thought there was going to be a shield. That that was the only thing oh, I was going to try and do. Yeah. Oh, the other thing, Gloria. Do you know that Gloria is an identical twin? Um, No. You didn't know that? Oh, that would have been a good one. Um, Yes, no, she was an identical twin, and that was one of the questions at the minefields that Gloria has an identical twin. Um, But so I spent a lot of time 
looking at her because she was so quiet. I thought that she was rotating in her room with like her sister would come down, then it would be Gloria. <laughs> and it, because when you do look at the other traders, like the series, so in the UK, you know how there was like a boyfriend, girlfriend? Yeah, yeah. I think like, the relationship in our group, like was Keith related to Liam or, you know, was was there something like an identical twin? Like when Gloria told me she has an identical twin, I thought something might be up with that. So I did spend a bit of energy on those things. <laughs> and that that's the only thing, uh, the negative of actually trying to study other series. It can influence you. I thought Luke was a trader because Suri was a trader in the Traders US. I just thought he's acting dodgy. Suri was from Survivor. Um, Luke's probably a trader as well. He's acting like one anyway. So, by the way, I love Luke. Um, I dig him a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and you know that he wrote down uh, who's the biggest threat in the game at the torture mission, which no one seemed to want to discuss or mention afterwards. Um, do you remember the torture mission? Yeah. His question was who's the biggest threat in the game? And he wrote down Camille. Camille. Oh. Yeah. They should have listened. They should have, <laughs> right? He says that now. He's like, Luke always knows. Yeah. Camille, I'm going to reveal what I like. Oh, you're about. Lo- And I've, yes, I feel I'll quite start. bad about it because Uh-oh. I think I've convinced you. I think I've done my job really well because you then took on my lie and carried it throughout the interview. <laughs> I am not interviewing Blake tomorrow. I- oh, <laughs> I was so excited about that because he doesn't give interviews. I thought, Matthew, you've convinced him. I've heard nothing from Blake. I don't. I I wanted. I am interviewing Roha, uh, but Blake, I'm I'm working on Blake. We we've been in touch, but uh, it's not happening tomorrow. Uh, So we'll see. Uh, So I did make that up. Oh, great one. That was a really good one, Matthew. Fantastic. Because I wanted to believe that so much um, because I really wanted to talk. I wanted to hear him because he hasn't replied to me. You know, I feel that's my, I haven't got a resolution on that. Yeah. I've sort of accepted that Sam, Matt, Sam, um, which is just unfortunate. But Blake and I, every day we played coits, Matthew. Do you know, you know the game? We had a great time. I really enjoyed I didn't get to spend time with Annabelle, right? We didn't do missions together. One mission on the night that she was leaving, we that that was our first mission together. We never had car rides. I would have liked to have been able to bond a little bit more, talk with Annabelle, um, because I knew she was clever and I knew she was onto it. Um, but we differed in a, in a lot of things, Annabelle and I, in that I believe a good player contributes to the silver and she thinks um, that's got nothing to do with it, you know, that sort of thing. Because <laughs> we have now about Traders um, Canada and she's like, can you believe that they talk, They want to vote, they want to murder someone because they didn't contribute? And I'm like, you go lay in your coffin. Great TV, <laughs> you lay in your coffin, girl. We'll do the riddles and we'll win the silver. You just lay there. Yeah. <laughs> Camille, thank yes. you so much for joining me and giving us so much insight into your experience on the show and your incredible part in that. I hope you've had a good time on the trader. Oh, look, I've had a fantastic time. It's so great talking to you. Um, thanks for listening to the chant as well. Um, <laughs> Did you say anything about that or just laugh at me for, for that? But it was, it was. I it, laughed and then wrote it down as your possible lie. I thought maybe <laughs> you were going really hardcore and inventing an entire song. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that was, real. was real. If you were going to interview Blake, I was like, talk to Blake about our song. Oh, the code names are real. I really am. I really was given the secret weapon code name, which by the way, um, as a super fan, you would know when Roger or any hosts, they come in at breakfast, they give clues to stuff. The night after I was recruited and given my code name of the secret weapon, the next morning when he talked 
in his monologue, um, he said something about trusting your gut because that could be your secret weapon. Uh. Right? And uh, I was like, coincidence? No. That was (laughs) from power. So crafty, so sneaky. Thank you again. Bye-bye for now. Bye for now. And if you want to know anything, traders, Matthew, just call me. I'll probably watch it or talk about it or make something up. It's all good. I will. Take care. You too. Bye. Hello, Trader listeners. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Camille as much as I did. She was absolutely fantastic to talk to. So forthcoming. So much strat chat. I feel like I learned more about Camille and that one hour interview than I did and all of the episodes of The Traitors Australia Season 2. It was so fantastic talking to her. So thank you, Camille. If you want to keep up with the podcast on social media, you can follow on Instagram at The Tradar Podcast or X at The Tradar Pod. We're also on YouTube, but if you're already listening to this on YouTube, you don't need to know that. And if you're already listening to this some other way, then you probably don't need to listen to it on YouTube. You can also email me at thetradarpodcast at gmail.com. And if you feel like supporting the podcast and making sure that these interviews continue, you might want to think about putting in a one-off little donation to coffee.com. The page is ko-fi.com slash Matthew Keeley. That's spelled M-A-T-T-H-E-W-K-E-E-L-E-Y. And that link is also in the episode description. If you enjoyed that interview, then I think you are also going to love the next interview special, which is on the way in the next couple of days. I spoke to Roha from The Traitors Australia Season 2, and we also had a fantastic chat. It was so funny. He also spilled lots of behind-the-scenes tea that are really, really fascinating to any fan of the show. In the meantime, David Bloomberg has taken over hosting duties of the Tradar to cover the Traitors Canada, and I may even be appearing on a couple of those episodes as well. So check that out. Until next time, stay faithful. Mm